Hi, Robert Medlin here. I want to tell you about an experience I had um, during a church service um, a number of years ago that really gave me a revelation into the love of God and the magnitude of the love of God as far as we as human beings can grasp it. Uh, during the during a, a service, uh, the the Spirit of the Lord fell on me and just clothed me with with power. I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to survive. There was so much power that clothed me. And and uh, during this process, a number of things happened. There were miracles uh, that took place. And and uh, but but one of the things that that uh, I remember the most was that was that in this state of being encompassed with the with the power of the Lord, with the presence of the Lord, with great power. Uh, whenever I would look at anyone, his love, the love of Jesus, would just flow out of me towards that person. It was like it would come out of my belly. It was like it was like a groan uh, as I as I as I would look at each person. It was like the love of God was just poured out of them. G the love of Jesus, the love of God, is is a groaning love. It's a love that just wants to 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 just swallow you up into his being and and clothe you with himself and and to see you so blessed that you can't even conceive it and so through that experience i, I got a little taste of, of what the love of god was like and uh and so uh for several days after that i was kind of had to fight the feeling of depression because i was back to my normal human self you know with with what i used to think was love you know for uh, but it wasn't even close. It, it, it was it was impossible to even uh, to describe it, other than it was a gushing love that just wants to swallow you up. It, that that uh, Jesus loves you so much that it's that uh, uh, in, in Ephesians, uh, the the scripture tells us that that uh, it said I pray that Paul prayed. He said I pray that you'd be able to, something like this must have happened to Paul. I don't know because Paul Paul prayed and he said said I pray that you would be rooted and established in love and have ability together with all the saints to grasp the length and width and depth of the of the love of Jesus and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Well, Paul is saying, I pray that you're going to be able to know the width and depth and height, you know, the magnitude of this infinite love, that it, but it passes all knowledge. It can't be comprehended. And so be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. So that's what happens when we get filled with God's love is that he fills us to the measure of the fullness of God. His love is infinite, incomprehensible. But let's just try to get a little bit of a grasp of how, of how awesome that love is, you know, 1 Corinthians 13 is, is referred to as the love chapter. And really, uh, God can't tell us to, to do anything that he doesn't do himself. And so this is really the nature of God's love. Uh, if you, uh, let's just kind of uh, go through it and and it'll just tell us really what, what God is like. It's, it's his desire that we would be able to love like this. Uh, and we do in, in measure and in part and in, in degrees because if you're a believer in Jesus, God is dwelling in you. Jesus has come to dwell in you and live in you by his spirit. And so he's in you. So so you can experience measures of the love of, love of Jesus being poured out. Uh, first, he wants you to understand uh, his love for you. And then he wants you to understand his love that he pours out to other people too. Uh, the, the scripture says, love your neighbor as yourself. So first you got to learn to love yourself. Well, loving yourself with God's love and then being able to to pour, let God's love pour out through you, let Jesus be able to pour his love out through you is one of the greatest joys and privileges of being a Christian. So 1 Corinthians 13, let's see what that says. It says, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, he says, I am only a resounding gong and a clanging cymbal. Well, it's possible to speak in tongues and not have much of the love of Jesus in you, you know. Uh, anybody can speak in tongues. It's a free gift. Uh, it's it's not a measure of uh, it's not a spiritual merit badge or anything like that. It's just a free gift that, that the Lord gives us to enable us to to pray and to know how to to, to pray uh, when we don't know how to pray to to be able to to uh, let the Spirit intercede through us. Uh, the speaking in tongues is great, but but it's not a merit badge. And uh, and if you're if you if you're speaking in tongues but you have not love, you are just a resounding gong and a and a clanging cymbal. And it says, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge uh, and have faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. You know, I love being around prophetic people that have a word from the Lord, that have a word for the church, that have a word for individuals. Uh, it's just a, a awesome thing. Prophecy is, is probably the most profound gift as far as being able to impact people's hearts. Uh, 
uh, in just an astounding way, a personal prophecy that touches their heart, just uh, has a tremendous power to, to, to open them up to receive Christ, to receive Jesus, to receive his love. And so uh, uh, prophecy is wonderful. But, uh, but if, if, I, if I have all that, if I have all the prophecies, I have all this understanding, I can prophesy to people, I can encourage them. Uh, but, and, and if I have faith that can move mountains, you know, if I have, I'm a, you know, he's a man like Elijah. He prays, boy, and things that really happen. Well, well, if I have faith that can move mountains and, and I have not love, is I am nothing, is what it says in First Corinthians 13. I'm nothing. If I, if I can do all those spiritual things, you know, because it's really just Jesus going, moving through us as far as the gifts of the Spirit and things like that. But I have not love, then I'm nothing. Well, I won't, you know, we should want love and desire the love of God. Uh, to manifest to us and through us more than anything. I'm nothing if I don't. And if I give all I possess to the poor <laughs> and surrender my heart, my body to the flames, but I have not love, uh, I gain nothing. Now, isn't that something? So so we can we can have Jesus can move and pour his spirit out through us and do awesome things. We can do great things as far as the eyes of the world is concerned. We can give up our life for others. But, uh, but the main thing uh, God is desiring is for is to let his love flow through us uh, he wants his love to flow through us and so um, uh, that that's his plan and his purpose that we would be able to grasp the love of jesus and be filled with the measure of the full of god fullness of god and it's not our love it's his love i want to talk about what his love is like and so uh, uh let's see what uh let's see what this what's what it says here in first corinthians first corinthians 13 love is patient <laughs> love is kind it does not envy it does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. <laughs> oh, it is not easily angered. It, it keeps no record. Now, this is this is this is God's love. It keeps no record of wrongs. God's love keeps no record of wrongs, and so we know that God's love is flowing through it flowing through us we're letting his love through flow through us when we're not keeping any record of wrongs you know i love the scriptures in in romans 4 and it appears in a lot of my videos i know because i i love it so much it says it says that um uh, that to the uh to the man who does not work but who trusts god who justifies the wicked his faith is credited in him his righteousness when you just trust that god justifies the wicked that, that he justifies you that you don't measure up to jesus uh, that you're wicked in God's sight compared to Jesus, and and you just accept that, and and it says God credits you with righteousness. It said David says the same thing. Uh, it says about the blessedness of the man who's credited with with righteousness apart from works. Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven, whose trespasses the Lord will never count against him. Blessed is the Lord. Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven. Blessed is the man whose whose trespasses, whose sins and lawless deeds, the Lord will never count against him. And that's what that means here is that, that God's not keeping a record of our sins. Jesus came in our in human form to fulfill all righteousness for us through his obedience. He was obedient for us. And when he died on the cross, he was taking the punishment for us. He didn't deserve it, but he came, he came to be the Lamb of God who was slain for the sins of the world. So he came to take all the judgment for all the sins of the world upon himself. It seemed unfair. It seemed not just in God's sight, but, but God in his justice and in his love. Uh, permitted Jesus to be to absorb to be that 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 uh, evil punishment that evil chastising and and torture that he experienced and being nailed to the cross and suffering on the cross Jesus experienced that for us not only that Jesus descended down into hell and and uh, defeated the devil in the grave and hell and and rose rose from the dead and he was doing all that for us you know Jesus that was Jesus love being poured out for us in that he gave himself for us for our sins so all of our sins are paid for so god's not keeping any record of wrong and do you know that god wants us you know if we're really letting god's love flow, flow through us you know that we won't keep a record of wrong either if somebody wrongs us we just say you know what uh that was just the devil you know and 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 i just uh, i just love that person anyway lord i want you to bless that person anyway i want you to save that person uh, I want you to reveal yourself to that person. That's letting the love of God flow through you when you keep no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. And it always protects. 
It always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. You know, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes. Love never fails. And everything else is going to pass away. Where there's knowledge, where there's gifts of the Spirit, you know, those things are going to pass away. But, uh, it, but and now it says that we were that we see in a mirror, uh, in a mirror, kind of faintly. You know, it's kind of we just kind of get a glimpse of the love of Jesus. But but when we get to heaven, we're going to know Him as He is. We'll see Him and, and be able to experience uh, His love uh, and to be able to experience the fullness of His love, having the fullness of His love th flow through us. There will be no limitations. And so that's 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 really the love of Jesus is the love of God. It's not. Our love, we can't, as a human being, uh, you know, people talk about love, love, love. But really, they're talking about human love. And human love has so many limitations. But God's love has no limitations. The Scripture says God is love. That's really His nature, is love. Uh, he keeps no record of wrongs. He, he, he covers over offenses, but He doesn't, he doesn't uh, say evil is... He doesn't justify evil. Jesus came and took the punishment for it. So uh, God doesn't just wash over evil. Jesus, God Himself, came in human form, took the punishment for it, for for uh, for our, all of our evil deeds, for all of our, all of our shortcomings, all of our uh, we're not like Jesus. All of our falling short. If you just take Jesus, uh, that's God's standard. We're not God's standard. The difference between us and Jesus is infinite. Uh, just like the love of God is infinitely, it's 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 impossible to be able to comprehend. It's it's um, it's beyond comprehension. The the glory of Jesus is beyond comprehension. The goodness of Jesus is beyond comprehension. But but God lets us partake of His nature by 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 letting us experience and by letting His love flow through us as a Christian, that His love can flow through us. And when we understand it's not us and it's not our doing, it's just whenever his love does flow through us that it's just him doing it and just rejoice in that and just say thank you lord your love is awesome thank you for letting your love flow for flow, flow through me just let your love flow through me even more and uh and so uh, uh it, it's just uh, a wonderful thing that the lord wants to express himself more and more through us and i believe that as we approach the end of the age that we that that's one of the things we're going to see is that that jesus is going to be filling us more we're going to be filled to the measure of the fullness of god that that uh that his love will be able to flow through us even more freely and and we'll see that even in greater manifestation but but uh even today the lord wants you to receive his love to know how much he loves you first and when you can comprehend you know this is love not that we love god uh, but that he loved us and gave himself as a gave his son as a sacrifice for our sins. That's what love is. This is love, not that we love God, but but that he loved us, and he gave himself. He sent Jesus to give himself as a sacrifice for our sins. So that's what receiving the love of God is. Just receiving Jesus and what he's done for us. It's it's not. And the more you do that, the more his love can flow out of you. And so that's that's when you're when you put your eyes on yourself and you spend a lot of time looking at yourself, you're diminishing Jesus. And not much of his love can flow through you. You know, you can do a few good things, put a little pressure on you, we'll see what pops out. So God's God's love is manifested as we as we get a revelation of Jesus and keep our eyes on Jesus and ex and experience his love, a little touch of his love, more of his love. Then that love can flow through us. But um, so let's just begin by by if you're if you've got any grudges, you got any criticism towards anybody. Uh, then, uh, then you're not operating in the love of God. Let's just, let's just, uh, let's just, let's just let His love flow in this. That love keeps no record of wrongs. So, don't keep any record of wrongs that people do to you. Just give them grace and say, Lord, I want you to touch them and bless them and reveal yourself, reveal your love to them, Lord. Just pour your love out on them. So that's our response. Uh, uh, in, in this world, is the Lord wants us to receive more of the love of Jesus, more understanding, so that we can just look at people and just groan, oh, and just with a love that just pours and floods out towards them. That's what God wants us to do, and so, uh, and then, uh, so we've experienced His love, we've experienced, and then we're letting His love flow out of us. That's that's the Lord's plan for our, our lives, and. Um, just uh, I hope this message was just a great blessing to you. Just let it just sink in. And, uh, let let the, that, that more revelation come, more understanding. I pray that the Lord will give you more and more experiences of His love, His supernatural love, that you'll be able to, to distinguish your love from His love and say, Wow, Lord, I want more of that. 
And so I just pray, Lord, that everyone that's listening to this video, that you will touch them with your love, pour out your love through them even more, give them more understanding, more revelation of how awesome your love is for them and for others. In Jesus' name, God bless you and have a wonderful day.